So switching gears, welcome back, Secretary French. We are happy to hear from Hello. you. And we're gonna switch now to literacy. We have a, a new draft. You'll see another uh, similar thing related to funding. Well, that or if we put that in this one. Um, funding uh, again is uh, something that is a little bit on the side at the moment in terms of how we do that. But we are looking for your um, feedback on the, the latest draft that we just went over today. Added a couple of things that you had asked for um, and looking for your feedback. Yeah, well, good to see you again, Dan French, Secretary of Education. And um, yeah, I mean, really the, the major piece that stood out for me was the funding. I, I can see a lot of hard work that went into integrating the various elements. And I think you've, you've ended up with a very coherent um, draft of pulling a lot of things together, but they hang together very well. Uh, so I, you know, I appreciate that. Uh, the funding wasn't clear to me um, so that, that was really my major observation, uh, which is on page 11, line two. It's not clear to us either at the moment, <laughs> <laughs> I will have to say, um, that that is something that, that we are sort of sorting out, but hoping that we can at least get an idea of what we're trying to, to create, um, right. given that we have an incredible influx of, of money. Yeah, and we, uh, you know, I'm not so sure about COVID dollars, um, but we have state level PD funds, you know, that have been earmarked before by the General Assembly for like 173. We certainly, you know, we, we continue to see literacy as a priority. So I, I would, regardless of um, your uh, nudge or requirement, we're still going to find a way to, to allocate some federal state level dollars for that. But that those federal dollars are really um, not related to COVID. They're more like the Title I and Title II that we get at the state level. So that's a question of us making it a priority, uh, which we'll do. But if you had in mind some other funding source, it's not clear to me what, what that is from this. Yeah, we're, we're just trying to, we're trying, to, we're trying to get the direction going. Uh, we certainly know that that um, challenges in learning to, to read certainly um, are probably affected by, by COVID. Um, we know that well, there's $100 million going into our public schools on the line of, of Title I, uh, where often we see our students who are struggling with learning to read. Um, and I think one of the things that the questions that we have is really knowing where are the areas that really have strong literacy programs with good uh, structures in the program using evidence-based system and where are the weaknesses and then how is the best way to ascertain where those are so that we can direct resources. Yeah, no, it makes sense. It's a good theory of action that I think we should have at the state level is the idea of disseminating best practices. I think the point you make, though, it's it's almost irrespective of what a program is, per se. If it's well integrated into a system, it's probably going to be more successful than not. So in those places where people have embraced sort of an initiative, it becomes a systems level initiative and the PD, you know, the time, the coordination is invested so that... Um, you know, it's it's deserves the attention it needs. So, I think we'll find that pretty consistently across the state is where where people have been intentional to to put some effort onto it. They get results. Well, I'm having a little trouble finding the new draft, but we had we had added a few things to that draft um, at the end of the maybe. Um, Jesse, could you bring it up while I'm searching for my copy? Sure. At three one. Yeah, three one is the version I saw on the web. I don't know. If that's... Yeah, that's what I'm looking for. It's in the wrong file. Ah, ta -da. Here it is. Um, in section. So, in terms of the findings, you're. You review that, let us know if you have a problem. The grant program, I understand at this point in time, you're not thinking that that's the way to go, correct? Well, I, you know, once again, I think I think you've done a good job of integrating, uh, integrating the various concepts. I, mm -hmm. I think you've done, the grant piece was, wouldn't be a priority for us, but I understand why and, and how it would function. But I think you've situated it in the context of 
the other elements that we see being more essential. So I, I think it's it hangs together again very well. So. Okay. And then when we get to um, the end, the last section, um, sliding by our places that say federal funds, heading on to section five on page 11. Um, page uh, 13 starts the duties of the SU board. And you had at one point had in there um, Lexiles. We've gotten some a little bit of criticism on Lexiles. Um, and I didn't want to take, take that out. <laughs> um, but we've added in new language. Um, adopt the benchmark literacy assessment for all students in pre-K through three with scores that can be reported in a format determined by the secretary. And we just put in after consulting with stakeholders in the field and outside experts in literacy. So. Yeah, I, I think that's language we support as well. Um, you know, the, just to underscore what that, how I would interpret that. Uh, so we're, we're looking at a measure that could be reported uh, at the state level, um, regardless of what benchmark assessment people use at the local level. That, you know, so we're looking for a common measure uh, that could be used at the state level, regardless of what the locals are using. And there's, you know, there's about five or six major bench commercial benchmark assessments. I'm sure our districts are using mostly all of them, but I'm sure there's a couple that are more prevalently used than others. So, you know, we would be looking, you know, the, the state's interest or what the secretary would promulgate is looking for a common denominator. You know, I'm not, I don't want to collect this data from that district. You know, the idea of having, giving the secretary that authority is to, to get a single measure that would help us identify areas of equity uh, gaps in particular. Right. To my yeah. knowledge, Lexile is the only common denominator <laughs> in that area. So, you know, but I'd be interested if we can come up with some other way to do it. Um, that's, for sure. That's, that's what I'm hearing from some of the experts. Um, yeah. It's the challenge. Yeah, it, it. yeah. And it's not, um, you know, to, to the point that every, we're not asking districts to do a new testing. For those districts that aren't doing your language here, it does require, I think, districts to look closely at implementing a benchmark assessment if they're not already doing that. But if they're already doing it, we will be able to get a common score out of that. The, the point I know people point to Lexiles as being inadequate or what have you, but it's no more inadequate than the scores they already have because anything can be converted to a Lexile score essentially on a commercial benchmark. That's why it's so widely used. But the other piece just to um, sort of flesh out a little bit what our state level interest would be it's also the ability to connect the K3 data to the three through eight data and ask back. So to provide that continuum, because right now we don't have, from the state level perspective, we don't have any insight to pre-K through three, but also districts aren't necessarily able to connect their pre-K through three through their SBAC data. So here too is an, an, an intersection, not the point at Lexiles again, but Lexile, um, you know, we've contracted, as many states have, the ability to translate their state assessment scores into a Lexile. One of the compelling arguments to do that is to connect it to other data they might have so they can see a continuum pre-K through eight. Um, so that's, that's the other aspect we'd be looking at is to connect it to um, the SBAC data. Great. And then we added section six, which is the teacher preparation programs. Yeah, that's something we had in our original proposal. We think, you know, it's a good, we should start that conversation. That's that's a common element in the national conversation as well. Um, I think, you know, we're in a good place, um, you know, to, to just sort of do that inventory, particularly with the context of um, some of the, I would say, consolidation conversations that are having happening with our state college system. But, you know, those institutions are our primary teacher preparation institutions as well. So, we need to have a better understanding of, of how how their their uh, let's say their consolidation conversation or their governance consol uh, conversation will affect teacher preparation pipelines because uh, that's going to be a critical need going forward. But then this this gives us an opportunity to look at a very specific issue, um, which I would also argue is directly related to Act 173 and special ed preparation as well. So, it's, it's a fruitful uh, area. Yeah, Representative Austin. Yes, thank you. Um, uh, Representative Brady and I were kind of over the weekend talking about uh, the teacher preparation. Um, 
And I looked at your testimony to the Senate and I, I, I don't know section six, so I don't know uh, if that, does that, is that where you talk about that the General Assembly would direct the secretary to review teacher preparation programs and report back to the General Assembly on, a, on to what extent these programs prepare teacher candidates to use science-based literacy materials and programs, because I like that language. And then we had thought maybe it would be helpful if you, you know, that you would look at pre-K and general education K-6 licensing, K-6 endorsement, licensing, relicensing should also be reviewed, as well as including a teacher's skills and understanding of how to use student data to inform instruction and remediation to advance the mastery of grade level benchmarks and literacy. Because if, if we don't address, you know, you know this, if we don't address the preparation, it seems that this is why our scores are not, we're not doing well, is that the teacher it's, is the critical component. Yeah, it's a piece, it's a piece of the puzzle. Um, I, I don't see the language you just referred to in the current draft. Uh, so what's in it, what I see in 3.1 is just the paragraph, I think that's on the screen. So I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know where the other, beyond what's right. on the screen right now, I don't know the other pieces. Right. Um, it, it, it isn't, it, I just oh. sent it to, to Representative okay. Webb last night. I'm not sure if yeah. she had a chance to see it, but we were thinking that would be good language to add. And I just wanted to see what you thought about that. Yeah, I mean, the piece, just listening to what you described, two things I just caught real quick. One is we have do have a major initiative uh, launched on data literacy with WestEd. So we are doing a major state level, you know, PD activity. That's really part of the 173 work and also COVID recovery. And, and that's, that's a topic that never gets old. You know, it's like, it's not like you do it and then you get done with it. So we always have to sort of, I would say, reinvigorate our uh, understanding of, of how to use data thoughtfully. So I think that piece we have, so I don't think it necessarily needs to be included here. The, the one piece that stood out for me, and I think what you said was uh, doing sort of an inventory on the relicensure activities. That's perhaps more challenging for us. We do have, um, you might be aware of the ALICE system, A-L-I-S. That's our uh, online relicensing system for teachers where we process the licensings and, and take their information to uh, from their um, local standards boards and so forth. That system is, uh, I'd say, fragile at best. It's something we're hoping to replace at some point in the not too distant future. We don't have the a really good ability, unfortunately, to go in and use that system to answer that question. You know, like, to what extent are teachers participating in activities related to licensure. So we don't have a, an immediate way to query uh, the data, if you will, to come up with an answer to this. That might be somewhat problematic. What we would probably have to do to answer that question would be to survey um, folks. And that might take more than just like a one shot deal. It might be like an announcement in the fall that we want, by the end of the year, we want to understand to what extent people are participating in literacy so we're gonna ask you to gather data in this area through the course of the year. So if you could start to earmark your professional development for if it qualifies as literacy. And, and several districts use uh, uh, online professional development management systems. So they, they could establish a data record in that and then ultimately produce a report at the end of the year. Most, most districts I would think still are doing that manually. So it might be challenging for them to respond. Um, the other approach would be to um, in, implement that as part of uh, the COVID recovery, um, you know, that we are, mm. we are going to direct districts to look, we have those three domains, and we're going to ask them to do sort of an assessment of where their students are at in those three domains. One of the domains is academic, you know, achievement and uh, well, you know, overall uh, efficacy and academic. So we could think about doing something there and get more of a softer indicator from from districts to answer the immediate question, to what extent were districts or students um, harmed, let's say, from uh, from an academic progress standpoint in essential literacy skills. So we might be able to get some read there, but it's gonna be, that's gonna be a problematic area to get into to sort of do an inventory of what people are doing now. I mean, it would be a nice way to go, but we don't have the infrastructure configured. Um, when I say yeah. infrastructure, I mean the data fields aren't organized in a way to, to do that easily. So you don't think language needs to be added in addition to what you have already? 
I think the data piece is already covered. And all I have is what you just orally described. So I apologize for not having a clearer sense of it. But I think the data yeah. thing, I, I feel comfortable on that if that was an essential. I think you mentioned it. And then the second piece, I think the um, collecting data in the current practice is more problematic than doing, right. you know, I think the piece we were trying to address is we don't really have much on the pre-service piece. You know, most of our focus appropriately is on in-service. So that's the grant, you know, uh, the policy is to look at the systems approach, uh, but we should we should be interested in looking at um, you know what pre-service is looking like. You know how are teachers being developed now in the pipeline, and I think that's useful for me um, in a couple areas. One is specifically to this area, but then secondly, I think we are going to have to attend to some pipeline issues in education sooner rather than later um, because our workforce needs um, you know are going to be pretty significant. I was I was talking with. Uh, one of our state level literacy experts and she was making the observation she's been working in the field for many years and she said you know she's worried about the impending retirements in the next five five to ten years uh, there's a lot of expertise that's going to be leaving and i think that's true um you know so we we're going to have to as a as a rural state we're going to have to have a focused conversation and a very intentional conversation on pipeline development thank you representative brady Thank you. As a teacher who's in the process of relicensing, I will support an appropriation to replace Alice any day. It is There's always one something old, worse, Representative Brady. There's always it is something one worse. Old beast. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> um, I just want to follow up on Representative Austin's point, and maybe I'm just reiterating, but maybe drilling down a little bit more. I think what we wanted to see, if there's a need for language about not just getting an understanding of what the kind of PD experiences of teachers in the field, but can we either incentivize or potentially even require for at least K-6 teachers when they go through the relicensing process that there's a certain amount of <clears throat> credits that fall under literacy. Of course, we'd have to figure out how to define that. It's possible that already sort of exists within the relicensing framework. I'm not sure because I'm so much more familiar with the high school side. Um, but I think that's where we wanted to make sure that we don't lose all the teachers who are already in the field in, in this and, and a potential leverage point there. Yeah, I if that's your intention, I think what you'd want to do is probably direct the standards board uh, to sort of do that because they're in charge of those regulations. I, I think the regulation is there. Uh, we have some pretty good regulatory language on literacy to a certain extent. Uh, we don't necessarily collect data on it, uh, but we have some aspirational uh, stuff and regulation, but I think the standards board would be in a position to respond to that and also uh, give you their sense as to what extent they feel comfortable with the current um, licensure regulations pertaining to this issue. They might have some ideas on how to improve it as well if it's insufficient. Okay. Are there any other questions or comments? I would just make the general observation. I think you did a great job of weaving together. I know there were several different elements and this is not an easy area. So I, I think it has come together. I mean, I, I read it as a coherent whole. I didn't really get a sense of it like being a chopped together kind of piece of legislation. Sometimes they, they don't have that feel. This this kind of still kind of comes together pretty nicely. So that's, that's good. And I think because this is February, <laughs> yeah. um, what it looks like now and <laughs> no, that's, right. that's, right. that's why we're sort of building in a little bit of flexibility as it moves right. to the system. But I think the Senate's also interested in, you know, so I think there's a lot of energy and that's, you know, I was talking to a few folks and my major goal this year was just to keep advancing this concept. And I, I think it's, it's gained some traction. And I think in particular with COVID, um, you know, we will, we'll find ways to, um, to look at this, but I think it does, um, I'm particularly, as a Representative Brady better mentioned high school, I'm a high school teacher by background as well. I'm, I'm keenly interested in issues of information literacy and, and non, you know, the use of nonfiction and just the, the wealth of information that's available as Jess was testifying to through remote learning on VTVLC. There's just so much information out there now. So it's, I think as a goal, it's one thing to appropriately should focus on early literacy, but we have this larger issue of just raising up literacy period for all, all Vermont citizens. Um, so it should be a major cornerstone of our education policy from pre-K through 12 and up through adulthood. That's a little media literacy for all of us. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, thank you. This is very, very helpful. 
Um, I'm not sure what we're gonna be able to do with the grant language at this point. It may be something that's just gonna to have to move through the system and as things reveal <laughs> what's happening at the federal level that it will probably undergo some change. Yeah, and who knows what additional COVID money will look like, but right now I don't see a direct connection to the current COVID money. You don't see a, a connection to literacy development using COVID money. Well, there's learning, there's a new provision in ESSER 2 around learning loss, mm -hmm. um, but that was already in ESSER 1. I mean, it can be fairly generally used, I would agree, but it's not a prioritization at the moment. Um, we'll see how that plays out. Interesting. Well, it's hard to, it's hard to show loss when you're just starting, but where you should be probably right. after this year. Um, okay. I think with that, um, Jim Damaray, do you have anything at this point or you're just listening and doing okay? No, I'm doing sure. fine. I have nothing to add. I'm happy to take another cut at the draft for you today. Okay. Thank you, everybody. Um, I guess with that, we can end. And that means that we're ending before 4.30, which means you can all go outside on this beautiful day. <laughs>